can scoliosis affect your height? In understanding how scoliosis can affect the body, the first thing you have to understand is what is scoliosis. And scoliosis is a progressive structural spinal condition that not only can affect the spine, but it can affect many different systems of the body. The development of scoliosis is when you start to have unnatural sideway curvature of the spine, and these, this curvature has to have a rotational component, meaning a twist from front to back or back to front, however you want to look at it. In order for there to be a scoliosis, the Cobb angle or the angle that's measured the scoliosis needs to be 10 degrees or greater. And this is the minimal amount in order for you to be actually diagnosed with scoliosis. Now, when we look at the connection of scoliosis and the connection between spinal anatomy and height, we have to really understand that the spine's natural curves, meaning the curves from the side in the neck, the mid-back and the low back are designed to make the spine stronger, more flexible and better to absorb forces and mechanical stresses to the body. These natural curvatures are in, in symmetry with each other to make the, they make the body more balanced in a compressive environment like gravity. The spine allows us to stand up right and straight and practice really good posture, and your head should be spaced evenly over your shoulders from the side and evenly over your hips, and your head should be over the center of your torso, and your torso should be centered over your pelvis. And in this alignment, the body is very, very strong to compressive forces. The spine consists of vertebrae that are stacked upon each other in a straight and neutral alignment from the front, and the vertebra have something called intervertebral discs that are used to separate every vertebra from each other. So number one, it can move, and two, it can support the healthy curvatures. And lastly, it can create spacing for the spinal nerves to exit the, exit the spine and go throughout the body and control all the body's function. So if the spine loses one of its normal curves or develops curves that it doesn't necessarily need, it can shorten the distance between the pelvis and the skull. And this shortening of distance can make a person's height possibly be affected in a negative way, meaning making them less than they're supposed to be. So therefore, is scoliosis likely to affect people's heights? Well, a loss of um, a spine's healthy curves can decrease a person's standing height. And since we know scoliosis is progressive, and the longer that it's left untreated, the more severe the curve can become over time. And then the more severe the curve becomes over time, the more likely it is to affect the height of the body, because as the curves become bigger, the, the, spa the space between the skull or the distance between the skull and the pelvis can actually decrease. Now, how do you know whether your curve is becoming more severe, which could be affecting this, is the best way is to take an x-ray. Uh, scoliosis x-rays are the best way to determine the size of your scoliosis, and normally it's done with a, something called a Cobb angle measurement. The higher the Cobb angle, meaning the bigger the degrees, the more severe your scoliosis is. Mild scoliosis cases are anywhere between 10 and 25 degrees. 20, uh, 25 degrees but less than 40 degrees is considered a moderate scoliosis. Anything greater than 40 degrees but less than 80 is what they call severe scoliosis. And then I have a fourth category that I call very severe scoliosis, and this is where curves are over 80 degrees. But really, anything over 40 degrees is considered severe scoliosis. Now, the bigger your scoliosis is, the more likely it is to affect the, the height of your trunk. Now, is your curve getting bigger, meaning just because you have a larger scoliosis, is it a guaranteed loss of height? Well, unfortunately, it's not always guaranteed. Scoliosis is very highly variable, and it depends on where the curve could actually be. And we know no two cases of scoliosis are exactly the same. But what we can definitely understand is that the bigger your scoliosis becomes, the more likely it is to create a, a, a loss of height. And every case of scoliosis needs its own customized treatment plan to either try to restore the symptoms that I experience as a result of scoliosis or to deal with the progressive nature of scoliosis. So what I'm trying to say is one patient can have significant trunk height loss while another one may not have nearly as much because there's different conditions and different types of scoliosis uh, that are associated with the causation. First thing is something called idiopathic scoliosis. And idiopathic scoliosis means unknown cause. Neuromuscular cases are when patients have a neuromuscular condition. Now, there's some neuromuscular conditions that can occur that actually make you taller, like something like Marfan's. People with Marfan's syndrome can actually have scoliosis but be taller than average because they get very long bones and they actually grow taller. Where other conditions like cerebral palsy cause con contractures, and these patients tend to be shorter. So therefore, a neuromuscular condition can also influence the height of the patient, not just the scoliosis. Congenital scoliosis is when a patient is born with a malformed bone within the spine, 
and they're born this way with something called a hemivertebra. These hemivertebrae sometimes are bones that are fused together and they don't actually have the disc spaces that they normally should have, which is believed could affect height as well, meaning it's more related to the hemivertebras than it is the actual scoliosis. Degenerative scoliosis is when a patient is developing scoliosis in their later stage life, and it's normally in the lumbar spine. Degenerative scoliosis causes the lumbar spine to go through a degenerative process. Degeneration of the disc, degeneration of the vertebra can lead to height, to height loss associated with the scoliosis. In fact, in degenerative scoliosis in late stage, there is something called hip on rib syndrome, and that's when these actually, the, the ribs can actually begin to touch the hip. And of course, traumatic scoliosis is when there's some kind of trauma that associates to your scoliosis, and it can actually lead to loss of height as well. So when we look at all these causes, which condition is most likely to cause a loss in standing height? And there's really no direct link. Like we don't know this one is gonna lead to that, but we do know as curves get bigger and as patients are growing, it, the curve becomes larger as they grow. So therefore, they know they're not actually growing up in height, they're growing their curve to become bigger as they're growing. Now, why does this happen? Well, there's actually one theory of idiopathic scoliosis, something called spinal tension, that the spinal cord is under tension between the inside the spine, meaning the spine itself, the bones of the spine are growing faster or developing faster than the spinal cord inside. And you can imagine the spinal cord being stretched as the spine grows. Well, there's only one thing the body can do to compensate for that because if it continues to do that, it will tear the spinal cord and the spinal cord is what keeps your body functioning and connects your brain to your body. So the body creates a curve to shorten that distance, therefore to make, to take pressure or tension off the spinal cord. If that's the case, you can see that trying to make the spine really straight in this condition could possibly be a negative effect because the spinal cord hasn't fully developed yet. Now, we do believe that the spinal cord does catch up, but it catches up later, and as a result of it, the curve is already there. And like I mentioned with neuromuscular conditions, there's a whole host of neuromuscular conditions that can either make people taller or shorter. But one thing that can happen with neuromuscular conditions is they can make patients non-ambulatory. And non-ambulatory patients, patients that sit a lot of time, can compress the spine and it can affect vertical spinal height over time. And like I mentioned with degenerative scoliosis, it's a result, a result of degeneration of the lumbar spine. And that hip on rib syndrome is something that we tend to see later on in life. And it can become very difficult to elongate. A lot of uh, adult patients that come to my office with uh, late stage or degenerative scoliosis, they feel like they've lost their waist, that their waist, and almost every single one of them comes in and goes, well, I've lost three, four, five inches. Now, sometimes people can lose height as they age just because of overall decrease of disc height. But with these patients, they're losing it faster and quicker than the average person because the scoliosis is also adding to that loss of height that occurs, that can occur over aging anyway. So my closing thoughts here is regardless of what the height at the time of diagnosis, we know scoliosis can affect height, particularly if it's left untreated and particularly in severe forms and also I tend to see it in late stage degenerative scoliosis or late stage progressive scoliosis um, that are left untreated their entire life. The best way to minimize potential loss of height is first of all is to be proactive. It's to treat the curve before it comes severe because treating a small curve is less likely to, to affect your height than, than a severe curve will. But if you already have a severe curve, the best way to restore your height is to reduce the size of curve. Meaning if you don't reduce the curve, you're not gonna get any longer. So we wanna elongate your, your, your torso by reducing the size of curve and having less impact, the scoliosis having less impact on your health and well-being. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.